And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Casari, and we are back in Automation, the car company tycoon. So this time we are moving into 1970. All right. New year. Maybe some new technology. We'll see. All right. 1970. Let's look at car bodies from the last 10 years. All right. Now, I really wish they actually showed you here what the the car bodies you were working with were, but apparently they really don't. So, let's take a look at this. Ooh, this thing looks nice, doesn't it? Sort of traditional muscle car sort of look. Go like that. I have kind of a sleek look on the back. Continuous line there. Pull this back a bit. We'll shift that back a bit because we can shift that. Kind of give it this stretched, more modern, low slung look, right? Sort of a chisel point nose in the front, maybe. Yeah. Let's give us just a little bit more flare on those wheels. How about that? In the front. And they get in the back. Alright. There we go. So we're going to do a ladder frame. And this is also going to be the 1970 Firehawk. And we're going to go with galvanized steel. Let's do front. Let's try longitudinal here, shall we? Now, this first model is going to be our very high grade one. So we're going to go double wishbone all the way around. And we'll go panel material, steel. Well, you know, the problem with this, though, is that we can't, um, we can't change this later. So that's one of the big issues we're going to run into, first of all. And this is going to make the engineering time is going to be pretty darned high. So, well, it's 165s. So let's take a look now, and let's widen... That's going to look silly, but I just want to test a theory I have. So it's still going to be 165s, but I kind of like that bit of a blumpy look there, right? Right. Not blumpy, but low slout. Yeah, see, it still gives you 165. So we can... Well, actually... No... There we go. Do I want to do double wishbones? We'll go McPherson with a semi-trailing arm. That should work better for this. And again, we'll go with a steel front panel because neither of these body types will give us mass production. So, steel all the way around. Headlight time, all right. Now, I quite liked the headlight design we had initially for the eco lines. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go for indicators
and we'll go with these vertical side mounted indicators. And then for headlights, we'll go with this. And then headlight. And then shrink these way down. There we go. Beautiful. All right, let's move forward again. And once again, I completely forget to start my timer. So we'll do this that with a longitudinal rear wheel drive. This thing has a huge engine to it. Alright, so let's take let's call this the sport line. And let's pull out Big old dynamo engine. And this is actually a five point. Wow, okay. So, let's just look at the detail stats here for this engine. Alright, so this gives us, let's see, 413 horsepower on the 5.2 Sport. And what about the 5.2 Reliant? Okay, so that doesn't give us quite as much power. So let's go back to the 5.2 Sport, and let's see what we can do with this engine. Let's copy it, and we'll call this one the Niagara. Oops. All right, 5.2 Niagara. Technically, this is actually a 5.8 liter engine. All right, so if we go... Ah, uh, we can get better RPMs now because we have the I-beam steel. And then let's... Alright, you know what we'll do? Hold on. Let's pull the 5.2 Sport back up. We'll delete the present Yacht Niagara 5.8. We'll copy this, pull this up. There we go, that's loaded. And we wait for the game to finish lagging out on us. Eventually. Maybe. There we go. One more transition, please. There we go. And we're going to call this the Niagara 5.3 IC. It's a 5.3 liter engine. Oh, right, because this one's been... 
down create it Um, okay, something funky happened. Hold on one. Let's delete this. Excuse me. Let's go to the 5.2 sport again. Let's delete that Niagara 5.8. Let's copy the 6.5 sport. Let's open that up. Sixty six, sixty seven, sixty eight, sixty nine. Seventy, and this is then going to be the five point eight Niagara engine. All right, I still like using the DOHC four aluminum, and we're actually going to go up to I beam. Ooh, it actually shows the different cool. Okay. And then we're going to move forward again. Alright, so we now have super leaded or regular. So this is going to be the issue here. So we drag this all the way back up to see the full engine. Thank you. And what does testing tell us? Good, okay. So we're down to 97.5 on our fuel, fuel octane. That's not too shabby now, is it? Now... I can theoretically go up to a quad carburetor. Gives you better throttle responsiveness and better fuel octane. At a significantly increased cost. This is the Niagara I. So in order to add Look at that material cost, though. Jeez. Now, what happens if we switch to injection, all right? So we're right now at material cost 1619 and... Well, that's actually not that bad. So it's less expensive and lower production units. Alright, so now what happens if we go to throttle per cylinder? Material cost goes up a little bit, but production units skyrockets. But it's actually not that bad an increase if we go up to throttle per cylinder. But it doesn't give us, honestly, that much more. See, we're at 96, 96, okay. It increased our throttle responsiveness, but that's okay by me. But what we can do... Why, why is that decreasing? Oh, because it's shifting my... Okay. Okie dokie, that's why. But what we can do over here... is we can wrench some more power out of this thing. So we're back up to our max octane rating. We still only have natural aspiration as an option here, that's fine. But we're now at 11.1 .1 to 1 compression ratio, which I like to see that. Reviability is at 40.7, so we're green across the board here. Um, let's just take a look at our exhaust systems.
Okay, so we're doing none and none. Alright, so we're at a good balance point here. Now, the other question is, how much more can we get on our RPMs? Okay, so it looks like 6300 RPM is basically our red line here. Until we start reaching... Yeah, alright. So we'd have to go up a little bit more here. Which lowers our material cost, but increases our production units if we decrease that. Yeah, okay, so we're, we're, we really, really, really can't go up much higher there. But we're still at 30.9, and we're pushing 6400 RPMs as our red line. Um, and this is out of a pretty big engine, so... And let's not think about our fuel per horsepower, shall we? Apparently the game doesn't want to give me the sounds. That's an engine. There we go. All right, so now let's take another look at the car we're putting this into. This is, of course, a manual with a five speed which, according to projections, is going to reach 188 miles an hour. I doubt it'll actually get there. Leave that the same. Let's give it some more quality here. After all, we're basically an engine company. We'll go with Sports Roads, um, simply because this is... Alright, so we're at 165s across the board right now, which is not as wide as I'd like. Yeah, all right, fine. So 185 tires there. We're going to go with alloys this time. Because, quite simply, we want to save the weight. Now, I have a feeling we're going to have to go with discs both sides. We have no downforce. And how much cooling does this engine need? 453 kilojoules of cooling. All right. Somehow I'm not surprised. Now, this is going to be a bit of an issue for us because we don't have a big grill space in the front of this thing. Um... Let's do this, but let's flip it. That does not provide enough cooling space. We need a bigger grill. That doesn't look aggressive enough. That... All right, we're starting to look like a jet aircraft here. But we need more cooling.
Okay. We still need a bit more cooling. There we go. Now, we need 453. So, 456. All right. We'll do a four-seat sport. Decent quality, standard radio. Uh, do I want to give this thing power steering? Nah. We are going to give it advanced 70s safety, though, because with that predicted top speed, if we don't, it's probably going to kill someone. Gas monotubes, passive, sport suspension start. Decent quality. Let's see what we get here. Okay, so it's going to take some a fair amount of tinkering with this guy, then. Practicality is pretty nice. Okay, so sportiness, what are our problems today? Oops, I clicked off that screen a little too quickly. Uh, let's see what the first thing to deal with is. They like the engine. They don't like the chassis stiffness, but that's pretty typical. Brake fade's an issue. They hate the brake distance. Why do they hate the brake distance? Why is the brake distance so absolutely horrendously terrible? Okay, what else am I losing? Body coefficient of drag. There's not much I can do about that. Um, all right, engine sound. They like that. They like the torque curve. They don't like the brake fade. All right, they don't like the brake fade. They don't like the understeer issues. Okay. And there's chassis stiffness, but that's whatever. All right. <clears throat> so let's pull that down to one. There we go. Okay. Wheel spin. Holy Toledo. Tires, yeah. All right, so we're having some monumental wheel spin issues. Um, if I decrease the rim diameter, well, we've reduced the amount of wheel spin issues we're having. So that's nice. But we're only down to 47% wheel spin. That is a ridiculous amount of wheel spin. Now, if I switch over to semi slicks. Not really. Give it a better tire quality, maybe? Alright, let's deal with the brakes now. We are going to need monumentally larger brakes for this. Yeah. Switch them to two pistons. Start jacking up that race quality. Just to get to that... Yeah, you're still... Just trying to take advantage of that brake power is going to be... Difficult on a good day. And we pretty much reduced the brake fade. You can go 62 miles per hour to zero in about 36 meters, which... Well, yeah, that... Yeah... Let's not think about that. I mean, as it is, we pretty much have this thing as boosted as we can. Any issues going on in here? And I could put in some power steering. Hmm. 
They like that. Our, our miles per gallon is steadily plummeting right through the floor. Alright, camber time. Our drivability is suffering here, by the way. There we go. And... Did I just break the game? Gotta love early access. Oh, okay, we didn't break the game. And we're freezing the game again because we're adjusting the right height, which apparently does all sorts of fun things to the game. jeez. Oh, there we go. Nope, that wasn't worth it. We'll go up by one. And we wait, 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 and we wait. There we go. Okay, let's look back at detail stats. So, top speed they like, driver assists they don't like. Engine they like, okay, chassis stiffness, that's whatever. Brake fade's gone down, and their dislikes, fine. What don't you like about drivability? Understeer, bottom out, gearbox footprint. Um, brake fade and balance are an issue. Drivetrain, engine they don't like. Tires they don't like. They like the roll angle, wheel load, they don't like the wheel spin. Yeah, okay. So, you people don't like anything about this car. That's fine. Now, if I increase this, what do I lose? Yeah, no. There we go. Alright, so it looks like this is going to do pretty well with the fuel-injected engine in the Niagara 5.8. Let's look at market. Don't crash. Thank you. I hate it when I see errors pop up. I'm like, oh god, please don't crash, please don't crash, please don't crash, please don't crash, please, 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 please. Okay, so we're looking good for both super, hyper, and muscle. Let's see, hyper. We are at. That's my car? 1577 versus 982. We have one competitor. And we are more affordable than they are. Muscle. We have one competitor. We are more likable, and we are more affordable. Super. We're more liked and more affordable. Muscle premium. Same. Track premium. Um, we're a little bit less affordable than they are. But we have better value. Light sport premium. How did I, the heck did I get light sport premium? This thing isn't light. We are achievably valuable, and... We are better off. We are better. We are better. I'm not even looking at affordability anymore. We are marginally better. We are better. We are better. Um, up until you get to convertible sport, we are not better. Utility sport premium, we are not better. We are better at light sport. We're better at pony. But we're not affordable at all. And we're actually not as good at GT, but we can compete there. Well, some things, I guess. Okay, so let's take a look. I just want to see how much time I have right now. Five minutes. So that's not really enough time to actually um, give this thing a go. So let it fuel ban in 79, emissions in 1981. Okay, good. So we have some time. We have some time. But we should probably start thinking about getting some new cars put together. We have the Sport that's running the 5.8 Niagara I Dynamo engine, and uh, yeah, so that's going to be interesting. We have the 5.8. The engine I want to develop next is going to probably be a monster 
engine for this thing. Just a straight-out monster for this car. So, yeah, this this will be interesting. Now, before we go, I just want to do a new trim. And I want to see what can I change here. That's locked. Okay, so I can't change my engine placement. It's going to have to be a longitudinal engine. That's fine. That's actually okay. That's okay. I think I know what we're going to do with the next car. And it's going to be a little silly. But... This will be our first real supercar. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Mr. Casari, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. I will see you next time. If you did enjoy it, please give me a like, a comment, a subscription. Let me know you're out there, and let me know you enjoyed what I'm doing. Once again, this was a vacation video, so we uh, didn't have the audio quality we're used to. There'll be a couple more vacation videos coming out, but we'll see how they go. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time. Happy building.